Hello, everyone. I think my voice is rather loud, but nice to see you all. We are working on a spider web. The toughest fiber in the world is spider silk, and I'm going to talk about spider silk today. The uh, attribution of this uh, spider silk is strong and elastic. And a strong and elastic are incompatible attributes, but both are really realized in spider silk. So strong and elastic, that means the energy which is needed to be to the breaking point is quite huge. That means it's tough. And here, those are uh, uh, top three green bars are the uh, silver, uh, spider silks and showing the toughness. The uh, top one, that is a Darwin Bark spider. That uh, spider silk is almost uh, seven times tougher than the aramid fiber used for bulletproof jacket. And we'd like to put this uh, na uh, nature gift of spider silk put into practice. And re-engineering DNA, we try to produce ingredients of spider silk and make them like a synthetic fiber. Synthetic fibers made of oil are used in products of all sorts around us and used for our daily lives. But when the oil goes completely depleted, our lives cannot go on. So the uh, spider silk that are comparable to synthetic fibers were better in performance while not depending on oil as its materials, then it's going to be great and uh, succeeding in putting such silks into practical use would be a tremendous innovation. So that was a starting point of our research. And this idea actually came up at a drinking uh, occasion with my friends at the laboratory. And we drank, we drank through the night at that time. And the mass production technology of uh, synthetic spider silk is a great idea. So why don't we just uh, set up a venture and that idea excited us very much. And after that, at a very serious meeting with researchers, we announced this idea. Then all the people just laughed heads off because they thought we just talked about the joke. But uh, after that, they realized I was serious. Then all the people at that meeting just said, oh, no way, it's impossible. They're just obviously um, against they were obviously against this idea. But I went to uh, the uh, master's course and I tried to make it happen. And just before my graduation, though in a tiny amount, but uh, I was successful in making this gradient of a spider silk. And this is the first one. So it looks like a worm, but this is the first fiber we made it synthetically. And it was really a touching moment. And we, uh, I was really happy to see this synthetically produced fiber. And that success made me decide to start up a company. But still, there are many people sa who said that, oh, you are crazy. You're going to set up a company just because of this uh, small success of a dust-like fiber? But we, I was, I found uh, courageous enough friends, and to set up a company, and they are my drinking uh, mates as well. And we set up a venture company, and after a year that, we master our mastered all the technologies available at the time and created this much. This is a twenty milligrams of spider silk ingredient, and it took three months. And we every day uh, cultivated this protein. But this is not good enough for mass production technology. And we spent five years. And now we have a state of art technology to produce this ingredient in mass production. And now this amount, this huge amount of ingredients can be produced in two or three days at a laboratory. But here's another question. We have to make them into fiber. If not, we can't make, uh, put them into a practical use. But look, this is fiber. This is available already now. So synthetic spider silk can be uh, spun like this automatically. So when this uh, worm-like fiber was shown, nobody actually imagined what would happen like this. 
and let's have a look today. I'd like to show this to you here. Da -da. This is actually the colored spider silk synthetically created. This is the first ever in the world and it's so beautiful. So you here, you audience here, are the almost the first group of human beings who witnessed this colored synthetic spider silk. Lucky for you. So um, the team who is capable to create this is only us in the world, we assume. And it's not just fiber, but we can produce film, sponge, gel, and non-fibers. We have developed uh, so many different uh, molding or the uh, pro uh, application techniques. And what is the ingredient of spider silk? That's protein. Human beings and the living beings are composed of protein. And protein is the most important uh, element. And our bodies are composed of 100,000 kinds of protein. But amazingly, this many uh, kind of protein is just made with only 20 kinds of amino acid. So uh, it depends on the sequence and how many of those uh, amino acids are used. We'll decide what will be produced, like um, hair or skin or nails or muscle or whatever. And it can also produce by the silk. So we can re uh, design the sequence of amino acid. If that happens, then we'll be able to further enhance the strength and the elasticity and will enable control of heat resistance and by absorption. If this happens, then there will be like a cars that don't hurt uh, pedestrians even in a crash, or light and supple protective gears that one just forgets wearing them, or skis and snowballs that absorb impact after a great jump. So skiers even don't notice when they have landed. Unbreakable and feather light wind power generation generators can be made as well. And the next generation uh, space suits to protect astronauts. So we'll be able to create so many different things in the future and change the world. And this synthetic spid uh, spider uh, fiber can change the world of manufacturing totally. So this idea just started from a joke-like conversation with my drinking friends. And at the beginning, everybody just said it's impossible. But do you audience think it's impossible? We don't think so. Thank you very much.